Hello, welcome everybody. This is your new lesson on circles and circumference. Most of what you will see today is pretty traditional stuff in terms of what you probably have already studied about circles in the past. So this is your title, circle, circumference, and we'll talk a little bit about area too. Our goal today, learning target, is to identify parts and properties of a circle and to apply this circumference formula. So we'll talk about that in detail. Feel free to pause if I end up going too fast for you. Um, first of all, we need to talk about some vocabulary. Some of this will be very familiar to you, and others of this will be somewhat new. So let's start with the vocabulary word of radius. The plural of radius is radii, and it's a segment with the endpoints at the center and on the circle. So I do have a little picture over here. So as I'm kind of highlighting the radii or a radius, I'll do it in green here. This would be a radius. So that would be segment CE right there. And you could have a different radius, and that other radius might be segment CF, or you could have segment CD. So it just has to have the endpoints on the circle and, and the other endpoint in the center. Chord. Now, chord is probably a little bit different for you. A chord is a segment with endpoints on the circle. So I'm going to connect a few chords here. So it doesn't matter where you touch the circle, but AB is a chord. DE is also a chord, but since it goes through the center, it has a specific name. That name is called uh, the diameter. So a chord just connects any two points on a circle, makes a segment. And then, of course, the diameter is the chord that goes through the center. So lots of different examples here in terms of your picture. And you'll probably want to get that down. You can get that down through some words here. You can also get that down through an illustration, as I showed you here. Now, if we wanted to talk about two different circles and they're congruent, um, congruent means same size, same shape. For circles, all they have to do is have congruent radii, two radiuses that are congruent. And just as a footnote here, what the heck is a circle? Well, a circle is a set of points that are equal distance from one point called the center. So as you connect them all, they do make a circular motion because all of these distances from the center are equal. Hence, they call them radius, or radii. Feel free to pause them. You need to get all this down. All right, new word, concentric circles. Concentric circles are coplanar circles that have the same radius. It's kind of like a bullseye. So, or even if you want to think about it as our curling activity, kind of like the curling activity. So as you're looking at this, um, These circles here, they both have the same center. And I could put a bunch of them in here and then just call them all concentric circles. Now what about when you have two different circles? What could happen? Well, you could have them intersect. And intersect means cross. So there's three different types of situations that this could happen on. Here's your first situation. Your first situation one of the more common ones is where the circles would intersect at two different points. Another situation, this middle one, is where they intersect at one. But you could also have them intersect at one in this situation, too. Well, what's the difference? Well, this is the smaller ones inside the bigger one. And in this one, they're on the outside, but they just kind of like kiss right here at the one spot. Circumference, huge vocabulary word you should have studied in middle school. And circumference means distance around a circle. So if I was trying to find the circumference of this brown circle right here, I would have to measure the distance around. If it was like... Um, like a, a fountain or something in the, in the front of a building, and I was able to walk along the edge 
The circumference would be how far I've walked once I've completed one revolution. Distance around. There are a couple formulas. First of all, let's do the circumference formulas. You should be familiar with these. The, the two ones we're going to use are the circumference is 2 times this special number called pi, 3.14159, 2 pi times the radius. That formula was discovered a long time ago, and it's used very commonly today to find the distance around a circle. The other formula sometimes you might use is just circumference equals pi times the diameter. Now, if you don't know what these letters stand for, you're going to want to get them down, like underneath. Diameter is what the D stands for, and radius is what the R stands for. And using this pi, will the pi, the number pi, I'll put approximately equal to because I'm going to cut off the decimals. 3.14 is the most common number associated with pi, but I like to go to five decimals, 3.14159. If you're using pi in a formula or a problem or a question or on a test, I'd like you to use the pi button on your calculator. Don't just use 3.14. Don't use 3.14159. It's a transcendental number, which means it does go on forever and doesn't repeat. So I would like you to use the actual button. So make sure you try to locate the pi button on your calculator. Area formula, we're not going to talk too much about that today, but I thought I'd mention it. The area formula is pi r squared. Take the radius and square it, multiply it by pi. So let's do a couple practice problems. So here's the question. Example one. Find the diameter and the radius of a circle with a circumference of 65.4 feet. Now, I do like to kind of visualize this through a picture. So I'm given the circumference. That means how much I would walk if I walked around this circle. So obviously, if I'm finding diameter and radius, I have to use the circumference formula to figure that out. I have two choices, pi times d or 2 pi r. It doesn't really matter which one you're going to choose. I'm going to choose circumference equals um, 2 pi r. And then I'm going to find the radius first. So the circumference is 65.4. So 65.4. And the 2 pi is 2 pi. And I'm trying to figure out the radius because that's the question. This is just like solving a regular equation. 2x equals 10. How do you solve for x? You divide by 2, etc. Well, in this case, how do you solve for r? Same thing, except instead of dividing by 2, you're going to divide by 2 pi. Got to be kind of careful on your calculator. Since there's two different numbers in the denominator, you may want to sub put those into parentheses to help you out. So I'm going to type this into my calculator, 65.4 divided by, that's the over button, then in parentheses, I'm going to put 2 times using the pi button. I get an answer of the radius equals 10.408. Since this question is in feet, the radius would be in feet. Now, if I just use 3.14, I'm going to get a similar answer. And that answer is 10.414. Now it's close, but I'd like to work on your precision, so I want to make sure you use the pi button. So what about the diameter now? Well, if the radius is from the center to the edge, that's the radius, the diameter is the whole thing. So all I really need to do to this number here is to double it. So the diameter equals 2 times whatever the radius is. In this case, it's 2 times 10.408. So I'm going to do that on my calculator, and I get 20.817. And once again, that is in feet. Okay. Two more vocabulary words, a lot of vocab in this word, and that's the word inscribe versus circumscribe. This is um, general terms for lots of different things, but let's talk about polygons. 
Inscribed, I kind of think about inscribed as being inside. So when you have a polygon that's inscribed, it's ins inside of something else. In this chapter, we're talking about circles, so it would be inside a circle. So a polygon is inscribed in a circle if all the vertices lie on the circle. So this is an example of an inscribed polygon. Inside. All the corners got to touch. It can't do one of these things. Here's a circle, and here's a square. That's not inscribed. These corners must touch. What about circumscribed? Circumvent means to kind of go around something. Circumscribed is the same thing. So if the polygon needs to be circumscribed, it needs to go around another object. So in this case, it's the pentagon is circumscribed around the circle. In this case, the square is circumscribed around another square, or a square is circumscribed around a rhombus. So those are general terms, but we're mainly going to be talking about these guys here in terms of how they relate to a circle. Example 2. Find the diameter and the circumference of the circle using the inscribed polygon. The reason why we talked about that on the last slide is so that you didn't really get confused on, oh my god, what does this inscribed mean? So this problem here, oh, look at that. It's not too bad. The diameter is running along this green line. And since that's a triangle and it's a right triangle, you should know what to do to find the length of the green line. I'll pause for a moment if you'd like to try to calculate that on your own. Of course, you can go to the good old Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. This is your c, which in this case is your diameter d. So I'm going to start with 8 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared and solve. 8 squared is 64, 12 squared is 144, and when you put those together, you get 208. Whoops, that's a C and that's a square. And then you square root, of course. Now you could do break it down, you could do decimal approximation. There's lots of different ways you can do that. I'm going to start with just decimal approximation instead of simplifying and breaking it down for this example. So I believe that's 14.422. Let me double check in my calculator. Square root of 208. 14, yep, 14.422. Technically, I should have a wavy equal sign here because I'm cutting off decimals. Well, that's C, and in this case, it happens to be the diameter. So I found the diameter. Should I put units on this? Let's check my, cal um, check my question. Nope, no feet, no inches, so I can leave the units off. Well, what about the circumference? Well, the circumference changes a little bit. You need to use a circumference formula. Circumference equals, yes, you could use 2 pi r, but in this case, since I found the diameter, why not just go directly to pi times d? So you're going to take pi times this 14.42 number. So I do that times, don't forget to use the pi button, and you get approximately, because I'm cutting off decimals here, 45.308. How many decimals do you go to? I like two minimumly. I'll put three here, um, but don't forget to read the problem. Next question. The diameters of circles A, B, and C are 8, 18, and 11, respectively. That means kind of in the order they gave them to you. So how do you name a circle? <coughs> Excuse me. You name a circle by its center. So if I had circle G here, then that point would have to be a G. So in this case, when it says circle A, it means this red circle. When it says circle B, it means this brown circle because its center is B. And then the other one I'm not going to trace is circle C. So it says the diameters of circle A is 8 since this is listed first and this is listed first. The diameter of A is 8. I think I'm going to erase this. Whoa, wrong one. I think I'm going to erase all this stuff because I want you to not be confused. Whoops. 
So let me just do a couple undos here. There we go. So I don't want to kind of confuse you when I start drawing on the picture. So when it says the diameter of A is 8, that means this red is 8. Changing it to brown for B. B is 18. And then I do have one more color available. C is 11. So this green is 11. You want to put it on the top so you can see they're overlapping. Now don't forget, diameters mean they cut them in the middle. So a couple things that I could fill in here. Since this whole red line is 8, I know that each one of these is 4. Okay, because diameters get cut in the middle by the center. Then going to the brown line, which is the 18, I know that this half here has got to be 9, and this half here has got to be 9. And then in the green, that's 11, so this gets tricky. So half of that green is 5.5, and the other half is 5.5, because that's half of 11. So we need to find FG and FB. So I'm going to highlight this, FG. So did I cover up my F? I think I did. Can I erase it, or will it make it not go away? Yeah, wait, we'll make it go away. So I'm going to have to undo a couple things here. Whoa. So one more time, let's try this again. So we want F to G. Now remember what I said. This A is 8. So this guy right there is 4. So let's go F to G. I guess I should probably enlarge this to kind of figure that out. So this little guy is 4. Um, this B here, I know that this is 18, the circle the diameter of B. So if that's 18, this whole thing, whoops, this whole thing to the edge, just to the edge, is going to be 9. So the red is 9. I wonder how I can get this. So i got to take 9 and add it to this part right there. I wonder how I can get that. Huh, this is going to be tricky, so follow along. This right here, from B to A, is also 9. But this missing part is 4. So can you figure out what this little part is right there? You take away 4 from the whole 9, you get 5. Because this green part is 4. This red part right here, oh, I might put green, red is going to be 5. So that whole thing is going to be 9, so that's why it's 5. So in terms of finding this, now all I have to do is take this 9 and 5, and I get 14. So let me undo a lot of that, and let me just put my answer down, because I'm going to have to write on this for the last one. I hope you followed that. So one more time. This answer here is 14. Well, what's FB? Well, this is FB. Oh, I should have did that one first because that's the one I found. So one more time. This guy here from A to B is half of circle B, which is 9. And this guy here is circle A, so it's half of 8, which is 4. So that leaves this to be 5. These are kind of tricky questions when you look at it. I hope that made a lot of sense. I guess I probably should enlarge the picture for you next time. Thanks for listening, and have a good day.